Hi there, it's Carolyn Peeler with you today in Ellen Hudson's classroom with a fast, easy, and stylish scrapbook layout for you today. Here's a little preview of what we're going to work on. So I invite you to gather up your supplies and walk through this tutorial with me. Enjoy! Today's photo is great if you have one focal photo that's a standout that you really want to highlight on a page and have the page all about that one specific photo. The technique that we're going to do today to highlight that photo is very, very simple. We are simply using pattern paper to create a mat around that photo. This is probably one of the fastest layouts that you can design. It's just really, really simple, but quite effective. Really great. So let me quickly walk you through the products that we're going to use. First, we have this On Trend uh, letters. These are acrylic letters. They're beautiful with this gold sort of mirrored background. As you can see, we're missing one here, and that's the one that's already on the layout. Then for the pattern papers, you're going to want to pick papers that complement the photo that you've chosen. For myself today, I chose, I have two papers from the Bloom paper pad, and then two papers from the Do-It-Yourself Home paper, and that's a Jen Hatfield uh, designed. So, um, so those are the two. And then I'm also using some of the Essentials by Ellen, the basic alphabet set. And then here you can sort of see what's going to go on with the photo. So nothing is glued down yet, but I've placed everything the way I'd like it. So one of the things that you'll see quite often in both my card projects and in my layout projects is I really like using these strips of cardstock. So you're going to see a couple strips of cardstock to add a little bit extra visual interest. And here's our acrylic word, and I've just left it. This is a quick tip if you're working on a project. I've just left the acrylic word on the acetate sheet that it came on, and this allows me to experiment with it in many different places to see where I like it the best before finally peeling it from the background and sticking it on the project. Ah, this little guy here, this is a do-it-yourself. Um, in Word, I simply created a text box that box that was black, typed whatever whatever words that you want to use in it, and then change your ink color to white and put a fill color in your text box. So in this case, I have a black fill on my text box. Print it as a square and then simply take it to a piece of chipboard, a blank piece of chipboard, glue it onto the chipboard, cut it to size, and then, uh, and by cut it to size, I mean trim it. So take your X-Acto knife and trim around the outside. And then simply take a a sanding block or just some sandpaper, loose sandpaper, and sand along the edges so that you get this nice white crisp edge and that's simply the sandpaper um, roughed away, the black that was on the top, uh, the ink color. So that's how you create this little do-it-yourself guy. I have my journaling that's already been done and put onto just some white cardstock. Today's layout is very clean, very crisp. So I've printed this photo. This is a beautiful photo um, that my friend Tiffany took of my mother and I when we were in Italy together last summer. So now we're gonna go ahead and assemble. As you can see, I have my pattern papers lined out here. There's two each from the two different six by six paper pads that I had. And so I've assembled the papers surrounding my focal photo. So what you'll do is decide which of the photos you want to see more of. The ones you want to see more of, pull out further so that you see more of those borders around your photos. And the ones you want less, tuck behind the photos a little bit more. And that's going to allow you to really highlight the papers you'd like to highlight. Now to start to lay everything down, what I usually do is I start to glue the papers to each other and sort of build this frame before gluing everything to the background paper. So you glue one in place, and then you start to glue the next one. Now, as you can see, I was fiddling with the heights of my paper because I did not want any of my papers to have the exact same edge. So for instance, this paper with the words, I wanted it to be lower than the paper with the stripes. I didn't want the bottom edges of them to line up across the page. I wanted everything offset so that you have this sort of funky, interesting frame happening. So as you can see here, I've got all the other papers in place. Now I'm going to gently peel back the stripe paper, put on my adhesive, and then stick everything down. Now you'll notice that each time I add my adhesive, I double check by placing my photo on top to see if I like my placement. In this case, I ended up deciding that the dot paper was just a little bit too high. 
and I didn't really like it. I thought that the, the white and the black dot needed to move down a little bit more. So you're gonna see, I'm gonna peel that up and then stick it down a little bit lower so that it's not quite so high. Yay, so now I have my mat looking like I would like it to. So I'm gonna now flip that over and put adhesive on the whole back so that I can turn it over and then glue that to the cardstock background. As you can see, my cardstock is just white and black cardstock layered on top of each other. The black is 12 by 12, the white is 11 and a half by 11 and a half. So I've got my mat on there, now I've laid my photo online, and I'm gonna once again place everything. It's kind of a little idiosyncrasy of mine, but I'm constantly placing things and just making sure that I'm liking where everything's going. So my photo's happy with it, got it in place. Now I'm gluing my photo down, the point of no return. <laughs> and now I'm laying everything else out to sort of start to finish things off. I've got my little cardstock strip. I love these little strips. I told you earlier, I do them a lot in my card making projects. So I've stuck, the, I've stuck that down and as you'll notice, I just showed you my yellow strip was lining up with the bottom of my green floral paper and I didn't like that so I lifted it up and raised it a little bit so that the bottom of it is between the bottom of the paper with the words and the green paper. Now I'm sticking my journaling spot down and we're getting ready for the final little piece de resistance. We've got our title. So I've got the acetate word there and now I'm going to do the stamping. So this is with those Ellen Hudson Essential stamps. I'm just using the Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And for these, I really want my letters to bounce around a little bit on this cardstock strip because frankly, it's a lot easier than actually making sure everything lines up perfectly. So bouncing them around, it looks cool and it's also a little bit easier. So I've got each of the letters on one of my little acrylic blocks here. Sorry about bouncing on the camera there. So I stamp them on my strip of white cardstock, close up the ink, and bring the layout back. So now I'm going to trim this strip to size. Snip, snip. And now I'm going to glue the little thank you chipboard accent that we made earlier. I'm going to glue that in place right before gluing my titles. So the acetate, I'm just peeling the, the, word, the acetate off the acrylic word, sticking it in place, and then for the mama, I'm going to mount that with some 3D adhesive, some pop dots. The reason for that is that this layout doesn't have a lot of texture stuff happening, so anything that I can do to add some, I wanted to do. It just creates, once again, a little bit more visual interest with the project. So I'm sticking that in place, and then I'm going to take the layout over to my sewing machine. I'm going to sew a little L down the left side. Now I'm back. You can see I've sewn that L, and I've also sewed across the thank you, the chipboard. And to do that, you're going to want to probably turn your sewing machine with the hand wheel as opposed to letting the motor run because chipboard is really thick, and it's just easier on your machine. The final step is a little zigzag stitch just at the top of my journaling strip. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment field. Bye.